Following World War I, the war had changed and became more complex. The beginning of the 20th century essentially established the foundation of a modern and industrial movement into a new era for architectural, design, cultural, science, and ideology. It is during this period that the term modernism was widely used, mainly during the period 1914 to 1939 and later. During the modernism period, Many artists, designers and architects were influenced by new ideology and inspiration while rejecting traditional and classicism forms. Furthermore, the fundamentals of modernism were derived from the teachings and ideology such as futurism, neoclassicism and constructivism. Therefore, how has this affected the Northern Europe in terms of its design and architecture and modernism? In order to explore this, we look at the origin of the word Scandinavia that came about in the early 18th century as a result of Danish and Swedish universities championing the shared history, mythology, arts and culture of Denmark, Sweden and Norway. The geographical region of the Scandinavian country meant that they each have a strong traditional influence on each other in terms of architecture, such as contrasting natural patterns and comfort mood. An example of this would be due to the Scandinavian winters and weather condition. Architects are unable to rely on the effect of light as they would have been in the Mediterranean Europe and would take into consideration psychological comfort instead. This led to the need for the Scandinavian societies to isolate and constantly being indoors being one of the primary focus for architects and designers to concentrate on. Sweden being one of the most populated of the five mainlands of the Nordic countries, is well known for its design and architecture to be characterized and influenced by England as well as Scotland, especially in South Sweden. By the turn of the 19th century, the arts and craft movement, which is based on the idea of William Morris, was quickly accepted by the Swedish architects and became popular. The influence of this movement was famous for works and writings of six Swedish architects and is linked by the association with the Clara School of 1910. During that time, four of Sweden's most famous architects taught six students and their ranked most famous successor, which are Elkis, Ashland and Lurens. Among them, Gana Asplund, who was born Eric Gana Asplund in 1885 in Stockholm, Sweden, contributed to the modern movement in Sweden such as the Nordic Classicism and Swedish Grace. He was educated at the Academy of Fine Arts in Stockholm the last year he moved into the Clara School to work for lecturers who were Tangborn and Isaac Gustav Klassen. During that period, Klassen tried to create the Swedish architecture and Asplund may have been inspired by French neoclassical architecture with the use of abstract and geometric forms. In 1913, Asplund won the competition for the design of the Gothenburg Law Court building and is set off for the first of several Italian architectural tours for celebrating and studying. At that time, he recorded architectural site and cultural experiences in over 300 pages of notes and sketches. When he looked at the ancient Roman temples at Paston, he wrote in his journal this, the temples need the height and the need to get their increases to reverence. Back in Sweden, Asplund later worked for Tambom with Lurens as a team in 1911 on the Woodsland Crematorium entry and that may have influenced his working methods. As Caroline Constance suggests, Lurens was more renowned for his expertise in cemetery design, while Asplund's efforts were directed to a broader issue of landscape design in the public realm. According to the facts, Asplund's early enthusiasm for Nordic classicism was clearly exemplified by the Stockholm Public Library, constructed between 1924 to 1928, and the later gradual shift towards functionalism was exhibited in his work for the extension of the Gothenburg Courthouse Extension Building, in which Asplund started on 1913 and finished 1937. Asplund contributed an established public landscapes commission but his most significant contribution to the urban landscape was a public library for Stockholm. The creation of the idea of a public library for Stockholm was to improve social and urban reform that European nations to public structure intuitions which are museums, educational facilities, libraries and parks. 
Also, his design approach towards a natural and geometric form coexists like his ideology and landscape design. It was discovered in Asplund's later work that features the most obvious biblical symbolism. This is evident from his work that incorporated fascinating sculptured figures of Adam and Eve as related in the biblical parable of the fall from Eden in his majority public buildings, including Scandia Cinema, Stockholm Library, and Stockholm Exhibition of 1930. This fascinating sculpture features in the centrally located theme of the Stockholm Library, demonstrated and clearly showed its application of figure symbolism from the door handle. One sculpture placed on the handle of the main entrance, which is Eve holding an apple, and the other door handle supports Adam who is eating the apple. The details of design like these by Asplund may be inspired by France and Italy architectural trips after he won competitions there. This quote by Walter Gropius is taken from the early Dissol period of the Bauhaus. The Bauhaus's early expressionism gave way to focus on rationalism and functionalism more in line with culture and what would become international style. As previously mentioned above, Aspen was strongly influenced by the functionalism ideology and had adopted and affected his design style from neoclassicalism to functionalism. Given that functionalism in architecture was based on the principles that buildings should be designed based only on the purpose and function of the building, the new functionalists had a large impact from 1930 in Scandinavia. For example, the display of remarkable buildings at the Stockholm exhibition that parted from historical and traditional style which generally gave regard to functionalism. Asplund had a strategy for the exhibition that led to set on Swedish functionalism or funkis, the Swedish term for functionalism, by improving quality urban design such as pavilion and paradise restaurant. It was through this exhibition where the charm of the Swedish classicism and tradition had been transformed to new forms which were simplicity and purity shapes, silver and glass materials, and stunning colors and it described the revitalization of Swedish grace. It was noted in the pamphlet that was published to coincide with the exhibition and committee by Asplund and Polish and this. We must accept the present reality. Only if we do this have we any prospect of being in command of reality, of getting the better of it in order to change it and create a culture which is a flexible tool for life. Asplund further stated that there was no need of the old culture's outgrown forms in order to maintain our self-respect in conjunction with the Stockholm exhibition and to criticize his previous designs. Asplen continued his architectural practice with works such as the Bradenburg Departmental Store, Furniture for the Swedish Society of Crafts and Design, the Gothenburg Law Court Extension, Multiple Summer Homes, and the State Bacteriological Laboratory. He was also a professor of architecture at the Royal Institute of Technology and the Royal Arts Institute at Stockholm and a lecture published under the title Our Architectonic Concept of Space. In all, Asplund designed a total of 68 projects, of which 32 of them were constructed. Asplund, with all of his contribution, was considered to be one of the most important and valuable Swedish modernist architecture and landscape designer. His architectural designs of buildings with Swedish grace has led to influence over worldwide international style and its impact from the 20th century is still evident today. Till today, we live in his design and architectural concept and he gives inspiration and promotes an atmosphere to young architects through his great lecture and publishing. Thank you for watching this video.